out of our uh, office in Richmond, Texas, not too far from here. And I'm going to talk about the prairies and wetlands that we are trying to work with, work on in, in this area and on the, on, the, on the Texas coast. So if, if you're not familiar with Ducks Unlimited, we are a nonprofit um, with a mission towards uh, affecting and benefiting waterfowl and their habitats, wetlands, and associate with those the associated habitats with that are associated with wetland uh, landscape um, and you know with including in our, in our mission is just trying to benefit other wildlife and, and people as well <clears throat> so as I mentioned I'm on a, the, our office is out of Richmond so I'm part of the conservation staff uh, with Ducks Unlimited we have a re we have regional offices across all of North America and our regional office is in Mississippi the southern region office and so, and so our, our Texas office is a, is our, is a, is a field, field site, field station, in essence. We have eight staff, conservation staff, and um, they include engineers, professional engineers, surveyors, and biologists. So we're able to provide a lot of, to our partners, we're able to provide a lot of project support that maybe some nonprofits do not have. I mean, we, like I said, we have the engineering and, and surveying capability. So, we can take wetland projects from, from concept through design and then all the way to implementation. We'll, con we'll actually manage, we'll hire the, 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 con the, con the contractors to do the construction, the dirt work, and we'll manage that work all the way to completion. Um, and then also on project support, somebody like me, I'll help the partners, the, the, the partners who are interested in doing the work on, on the ground, we'll help them find funds. So we'll do it through, you know, public, through, through public money grants. Um, we also, have, since we are a Ducks Unlimited, you're probably familiar with our banquet system and other, we have, so we have that kind of capabilities to go out and get private funding as well through corporate or foundations. Um, and we can all put it together and, and just help out the, 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 uh, the partnering agencies who, are, who, are, who want to do the project. We can help them on the ground to get it, to get it put in place. <clears throat> So, so I mentioned that we're a waterfowl and wetland kind of relate, uh, uh, focused group. Well, we d here in Texas is, you know, the coastal Texas is a, is a major migration area for waterfowl. That's, so, you, so you might not think of prairies as being important Maybe, and only important on, the, on, their, on, their return, on the return migration for waterfowl up in the prairies, up in the, the northern prairies of, of, of U.S. and Canada. However, some people might not realize that you, we do have a resident duck here in Texas. It's the mile duck, and it, is, it does require habitats on the Texas coast year-round. These birds not only uh, live in Texas, but also on the, on the coast, but also in Louisiana. And so they require all these, they require all the habitats, you know, wetland and they require the wetland habitats of, the, of inland and also the, uh, the coastal habitats as well. And what's in mo most important to them for their, for their population in terms of keeping, keeping numbers healthy and maybe in trying to increase in numbers is, is their success at nesting. And so obviously the prairie is where they're nesting at. The prairie is the grassland habitats of where they need a nest. And so whatever we can do as a, as a group with our partners to affect nesting sites or nesting grounds uh, beneficially should help this bird come along with in, in terms of population growth and uh, recruitment uh, nest success and so if you if you're kind of wondering what this could look like on the ground for model ducks this is kind of a typical picture I kind of like to show it just you know it, get, it provides a sort of a just an example of, of this you know mosaic of uh, you know higher ground providing nesting sites in, in the grass in the grassland areas plus the water for their other the the the, the, the needs of for foraging for uh, helping for uh, brood rearing for molting for pairing before the breeding season all this I mean so that this it's it's a combined it's definitely a, you want to try and achieve a mosaic of habitats <clears throat> so now I want to move on towards so I'm going to talk about both public land projects that we're involved in where we're trying to inter, uh, intermix uh, 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 wetland work with a restoration of grasslands 
And also, I'm going to uh, talk, so I'm going to talk about on the public land side and also later on in the private land uh, arena where we have some programs that we put out, or I should say we have one program that we put out, and then there's a chance that there's a new program that's coming out that may help uh, put this, put, you know, kind of help put both wetlands and grasslands on, on the landscape in the private la land air side of things. So my first, first project I want to talk about is at Sheldon Lake State Park. This is, this is, you know, this is, this is over in Northeast Houston, part of Andy's, uh, his responsibility. And this has been, this has been going, this is a long-term project that's been going on at the state park since, mm, what, 12 years ago? 2003. And so, so since then, you know, they've, they've, they've had a lot of, the state park has had a lot of success. Or not, or learning, or learning, I guess they jumped the learning curve, right? They've done a lot of, done a lot of parts, a lot of different phases. Phases one through four have already, already been complete. And they've, and they've uh, basically brought back wetland areas and, and uh, restored grasslands on the, on, the, on the state park. And so now we're in the, they're in the, kind of in the, in the final, probably in the final, uh, in the final phase of this, of this restoration effort. Is that correct? Would you say it? So it's phase five. And so <clears throat> this project was brought to, was, was, uh, was sort of started out in about 2016. Um, it's a 100-acre project site. It's a, former, it's a former turf field that prior, prior to that was actually rice and maybe row crop as well. And so, but it's, it's now it's, it's a former, it's a former uh, uh, turf field and the plan is to um, try and uh, restore 20 acres of wetlands by excavating out the material that had been pushed into the lows for the farming activity. And then, and then after that would be after wetlands are restored or excavated out materials, the, the materials excavated out of those wetlands to come back in and, and restore the prairie. Um, all these projects are, you know, all these kind of pro restoration efforts that we talk about here as a group, you know, it's, I think you all realize it's, it's a multi partner effort. You can't just not want, not just one agency or one individual can get it done. You need help. And so, Texas, like I mentioned, Texas Parks and Wildlife, they own the state park. They, in this case, they brought, for, for this phase, they brought forward the funding to do the excavation work and I believe most of the rest, the uh, grassland restoration as well. Um, Ducks Unlimited, we provide, you know, we, we, we provided the engineering, um, the surveying, the engineering and design work and also the construction management work that I spoke of earlier. Uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Co Coastal Program brought forth funds to let us go do the survey and design work on the ground. And then Texas AgriLife, um, they're involved with the planning of the wetlands after they're excavated. And then also uh, um, some of the... Say it again, for the prairies? For the prairies? Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Sandy. Um, and here I just wanted to show you what this design would look, what looks like after, you know, after we do our, do our magic, go out and collect elevation shots. And then after some more, some, some uh, detailed analysis of historical foes occur by Texas Parks and Wildlife or the people on the ground who knows, who know the site better, we start putting together the elevation data along with the historical information and, and start mapping out wetland sites. And then through, um, through visiting, through, through uh, somebody like Andy going out and, and checking on those, the sites he found on the historical photos, he'll go out in the field and take cores to per, just to sort of verify that yes, this was a wetland and that these possibly are the, are the, are the boundaries of that wetland and the possible depths of the wetland. And so we take that information and try and put it all into, into the engineer and, and, the, and the partner on the ground, put it into a, a design. And this goes through a couple iterations about how it should look. So I remember I told you how this site, it was, it was, it was flattened by, by farming processes. The farmer or whoever was working on the site before pushed the highs into the lows to make it uniform elevations. And so here, you gotta remember, it's, it's gotta, you gotta take that material out and you gotta dispose of it. So you can't just take it away, that's more expensive to the project, and so you should, in the effort to try and bring back some type of topography or micro topography to the site, you, you, you sort of dispose of it in a more, you, you dispose of it around the wetlands to keep, somewhat to keep costs down, but also to have somewhat of an appearance. And we're not talking like, we're not talking a lot of, uh, we're not talking about some high spoil sites. 
you were only excavating down no more than um, maybe a foot and a half at the, at the deepest, but it grades to, from shallow to deep. And so actually, there, as you can see here, the dark blue sites are the deeper parts of, the, of the, each of the wetlands, and the lighter blue are the most shallow. So the end result for the spoil, we're, not, we're talking no more than mostly, from, uh, mostly six inches, but maybe as, many, maybe as high as 12 inches. And so this is, this, this is some photos that show the site prior to, prior to the, the restoration efforts. The, uh, these are from April of 2016 during a site visit I had with Texas Parks and Wildlife and also U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as well. And it's, like I said, it was an old turf field. It was pretty, in terms of invasives, I guess, except for the turf grasses, it was pretty clean. You know, and there's no brush to deal with. It's probably more of a relatively, to some sites that had br would have brush problems, this is probably a relatively easier site to sort of work with in terms of, in terms of that aspect. Um, so we went to work earlier this year. And in this case, we used, it, was, it was pretty wet, so it looks pretty messy on the, on the left. And it, yes, it was pretty messy. It took a while to finish, this pro to, to finish most of the excavation work out. It rained consistently all, throughout the year. Um, and then by July, but by July we had some semblance of basins being restored. And I think this project, the excavation work, just, we just finally uh, cleared this project or cleared the, construct, the, the contractor to let, to let them demob just a, maybe a few months, just a couple months ago. And so the next step is to take this, um, like I said, next step is now to, to uh, plant those wetlands with uh, native material. And then follow that by that would be the, 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 the upland, the, the prairie restoration side of things. The next project I'd like to call, call your attention to is, is on the other side of, uh, of Galveston Bay over in Anahuac National Wildlife Refuge. This project um, was brought to, 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 uh, to Ducks Unlimited by uh, Texas AgriLife, uh, Marissa Loeza. She introduced this project to us. She asked us to help with um, if we could help help design this project and so it's an old it's just, it's it's the, the project site is in the east unit of the refuge on this this former ag field um, called what they call the pintail prairie site and it's a 360 acre um, unit it it was it's currently like I said it was a former ag field it hasn't been touched for a while and so it's just grown up in, in Bacchus but we're gonna but this this project is gonna mimic what was just what I just talked about over at Sheldon Lake in terms of how how we're going to go about uh, taking it from step one to the to the final to the final uh, finished product. There's going to be a, a effort of of uh, again multi a multi a multi partner team. Here it's the refuge being U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Texas AgriLife again, and also we're including Texas Rice. The Texas Rice is a Another nonprofit group here in Texas who does a lot of work with private and public land, uh, public lands. Texas Rice will, in this aspect in this project will help us tour, uh, uh, accomplish uh, uh, grassland restoration after uh, after the wetlands are completed. And so here um, the, the restoration objective is it's just, these are rough numbers, but essentially approximately probably somewhere around a third wetland to a two thirds. Uh, 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 gr uh, grassland or prairie restoration. <clears throat> so we've already we started this we started this project with the survey and uh, with the surveying back in uh, last last winter. Um, we did we completed that survey. We we provided some top topographical drawings back to Texas AgriLife because they're going to be the ones to take that information along with historical photos to 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 go ahead and identify the wetland sites. And that's what this, this photo down, so here is the, our, 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 our grid that we laid out to collect all our elevations. Each of these, each of these lines represent where, where uh, the data was actually a data point or data points were collected with the elevations of, of, the, of the ground. Um, and then this is actually the historic photo from the 30s. And you, and you can see if you, by looking at that photo and looking at the, the signatures that you can kind of tell the, of the, the dark areas are more wet versus the lighter, like what Andy said, the lighter areas are maybe higher ground. And so this, this is just sort of a concept, right? At this point, it's just a concept at this point, 
now. It's our, it's our, I guess, the first attempt to go and, and draw out the boundaries of the wetland sites here represented by, this, by these, red, these red polygons. Um, Marissa is going to go, is currently now trying to confirm as, those as wetland sites and what their sizes and shapes and depths could be by doing this, taking soil cores. Um, after the soil cores, that information from the soil cores uh, is gathered and, and, and analyzed, the next, point, the next step is to take it all, all that information and put it into the final design. What's going to, for the, to head to move towards construction and excavation. Um, we've all, Ducks Unlimited has already uh, applied for, and I think, and we were successful in getting a, a national, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, a North American Wetland Conservation Act grant, in which will help us uh, do the wetland work, the excavation work at the site. And our, our hope is to try and get that started, initiated this, this coming spring and summer. Um, following that, it's going to be the, the wetland, wetland planning, that, which is going to be accomplished by Texas AgriLife with their volunteer groups. And then following the, the, the planning of the excavated ponds or, or wetlands will be the, the prairie restoration side of things. <clears throat> And so now I want to flip it and go on and talk about private lands. Um, Dex and, Ducks Unlimited has a very high profile on private lands with our Texas Prairie Wetlands Project. And we see opportunities of how you can, well, you're, while you may not be as detailed restoration efforts as, as the two projects I mentioned, there's, there's a way to provide that sort of at a coarser scale, I guess, at a coarser scale to provide that prairies and, and wetlands combination on the, on the private landscape. And so this, I kind of show this picture just to sort of be a kind of a perfect example of what this could look like on the landscape. I mean, so here we have like a, a, a typical uh, pro, a managed kind of wetland. There's a levee on, on, the, on, the down, on the bottom end that allows for water to be, to, 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 to pool up within the lows of the field, of this abandoned field or old pasture land. Um, the landowner would manage this site, the, manage the wetland according to his, his purpose. It may require, there's a structure, there would be a structure here on this, on the, on the low end of the uh, levee, allowing him to, to manage water levels, to do, to, to do the things that he wants to do for this wetland. He may be interested in waterfowl, and so during the off season, he probably would pull boards, do some management, uh, to re after racing water, do some management to take to take out some inv invasive species, so to speak. Or, if or on on years where he doesn't need to do that work, he can leave the boards in and, and provide spring and summer water for for mono ducks. But and then so on, and so with another with some other other kind of programs, you have this potential to affect the upland ground on this site, and that's what I want to talk about as well. And that and, and that would provide, in terms of, at least in, in terms of mild ducks, ben, for benefits for them, you'd have this mix of grassland, nesting cover, and uh, wetlands that would be uh, beneficial for brood rearing. So, again, I'm going to talk about start out, start, start off with our our, our uh, long term program we've been doing since '91, which is Texas Prairie Wetlands Project, and then I'm going to move on to this this new program that. It's coming soon. I don't have a whole. I'm not the. I'm not the expert on it. Not and DU and Ducks and Lemon is not the leader of this of this effort. But I just wanted people to know that there's an effort coming out that's that uh, is going to be talking. It's going to be uh, trying to affect grasslands on the private landscape, and it's called the Coastal Grassland Restoration Initiative Program. What is the geography of that? I'll be getting to that, and so. I'm sorry, I'll be getting about. I will get to that again. That title. But you can call it Sea Grip, for short. So the Texas Prairie Wetlands Project, if you haven't he never heard of it before, it's it's been a long-term effort that's been uh, again multi-partner effort with Ducks Unlimited as in the lead, but with also a, a funding and and um, other technical support from Texas Parks and Wildlife and NRCS and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service also, uh, uh, so uh, in terms of the, the two agencies that deliver, Ducks Unlimited delivers most of the projects, let's say from Victoria North up to the, to the Sabine on the coast, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is our partner in delivery, and they have a, they have a staff uh, uh, south, they have staff south of Victoria, and they cover the rest of the Texas coast. 
And so this, this program is focused again on the coast and within the 20, 28 counties along the coast. And it's meant to, the mission here is to is provide wintering habitat for waterfowl, increase their survival rates during, uh, not just when they're here, but also by providing the habitat they, on the ground that's foraging habitat. And so with having quality foraging habitat on the wintering grounds can affect their success as they return back to the, the breeding grounds and even may affect their success at, at nesting. There's some studies out there that suggest uh, birds that leave the wintering grounds in better condition because of forage do better and ha actually nest earlier and do better at nesting ha and have a better chance of pulling off a brood successfully in the breeding grounds further north. So here's, so for, so for the Texas Prairie Wetlands Project, the, the, these highlighted areas represent the, the, the counties I mentioned, the coastal counties I mentioned where we are focusing our efforts. And it's broken down into the Schneer Plain, the Texas Mid Coast, and the Laguna Madre, which is synonymous with um, the Gulf Coast Joint Venture and how they break out the, the Gulf Coast Joint Venture actually spans from Louisiana down to Brownsville and within the, at that boundary of the joint venture, they break it out into initiative areas. Well, within Texas, the initiative areas are the Texas Near Plain, the Texas Mid Coast, and the Laguna Madre. Um, so again, it's a, it's a program that works with private landowners, and the, uh, and the mission here is to, to create, restore, or enhance uh, wetland habitat on the, within, within, private lands, within the private landowner landscape. Um, we provide, Ducks Unlimited provides the, the design and sur the, the survey design and uh, engineering port part of things, and we help cost share the project. So we give them the data they need to, to take a pro to, to, to get the project constructed, but, the, but the landowner is the one who has to uh, 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 contact the contractor, work with them, and they pay a cost share, and DU helps, helps as well. Um, so the, and so we engage with those private landowners, and we, help, and we get them, and, we, and whenever they, they enroll in this program, the, the wetland that's, that's created uh, or, or enhanced by this project is enrolled, the, the landowner and the property is enrolled into a 10-year agreement. And it's just, it's an agreement that keeps them from, that they're basically saying they're not going to take the, they're not going to take down the levees, they're not going to take down the, they're not going to take out the water control structure. Um, so the, and, the, and it's going to benefit wintering waterfowl and shorebirds, and in some cases where there's no conflicting uh, 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 land use during the growing season, provide spring and summer water for model ducks. And this, this program is, is run out of our office, um, and the, the lead DU biologist is Taylor Absher. And I have, um, I have the, these, are, these are in the back. I hope, I hope they're still in the back. I see the food, and I replaced them. But if you, I'll try and find them again. If you want to come to me and, and pick, get some of these from me, I can give them to you. It's just, it's just a pamphlet about Texas Prairie Wetlands Project and has Taylor's contact on it as well. Um, so next, I wanted to go. I wanted to t talk about Sea Grip or the Coastal Grassland Restoration Incentive Program. Like I said, it's new, and this is a partner. This is a partner-based, partner-driven approach to restoring grasslands in, on private lands. Um, and so this is coming out of the Gulf Coast Joint Venture uh, Office. It's being it's being uh, sort of administratively run by Steve Damaso. I'll have a I'll have a slide at the end that gives his information or at least his email to contact him with more with more questions. Thank you. Um, so what is Coastal Grip? Well, it's definitely coming soon. I know that. It's a means to provide uh, assistance, financial assistance or, or incentives to private landowners for conduct for conducting habitat treatments. That, af that affect the suitability of, of grassland to provide habitat for birds, including mild ducks or, and, and other grassland birds on their property. It is voluntary and, then it re and reimburses the landowner with a set payment rate for the practices that they need to employ to bring up the quality of their site. And so that could be brush management, prescribed burning, actual reseeding, uh, and also possible grazing. <clears throat> And so this program has a directive in that it's, it needs to, the, 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 the Gulf Coast Joint Venture wants it to benefit their pri the priority suite of species that they see for grasslands here in Texas. Now, this is, these are only four species, but it's not the only species that this, this program will benefit. But these have been uh, targeted species that may have 
that maybe you're just not included in other programs. And so we have, you know, obviously uh, northern bobwhite quail, the, the loggerhead shrike, the conch spar sparrow, and mono ducks. All these species have sort of share a common, com have share in common their population numbers, or so there's a concern about them. <clears throat> and they're probably species that we can truly affect with, 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 with effort. We can affect them beneficially. Um, like I said, the categories, the, the management practices and rates we're talking about are for, um, or I should say cost share rates are for brush management, uh, treatment of brush management treatments, uh, prescribed burning na and native grass receding and, and also prescribed grazing. And so th there is a question about where are we going to do this at? Where is this, where is CGRIP going to be focused at? So, so for now, for now, just as an, initi as an initial focus area, the, the, the Texas Midcoast has been identified as a priority, just for now. And within, and within the Texas Midcoast, there's been five, the five areas, focus areas, where this, is, where this program is going to roll out and, and work with private landowners. And so we have the Katy Prairie area. Uh, this is, I guess you'd call this like the Hitchcock slash Brazoria, uh, Nash Prairie region, um, Matagorda and Jackson County along the, along Matagorda, uh, Matagorda Bay. And then north and there's a north area north and south of Victoria. And so the part for in terms, so I mentioned it's a multi-partner, uh, program. And, and so, like I said, the Gulf Coast Joint Venture is going to be administrating it for the most part. Uh, but the other, these other four, or I should say five uh, groups, are going to are helping are help with are helping funding it. So you have the American Bird Conservancy, the Nature Conservancy, Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, and Quail for, Forever and Pheasants Forever. Um, so I mentioned the rollouts coming. The rollouts coming soon. They're going at some point. They're going to be talking to partners and, and taking pr taking proposals. Um, people, I guess. Folks with, like, say, the private land biologists for Texas Parks and Wildlife, um, maybe through TNC, and other agencies and nonprofits who work with private landowners will be the ones to bring forth potential projects to, to the Gulf Coast Joint Venture. Um, there's only funding. Is, right now, it's, like it's, 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 you know, the program's in its infancy. I don't think they have any more than a half million dollars at this point for this, for this annual, for this, for this upcoming year. So it's, I don't expect to see a lot of pro projects come through, but it's something they're going to hope, they hope, they'll, they hope they'll build upon. I mentioned Steve DeMasso, who's with the joint venture. He's the one you need to speak to if you have more questions. I'm not the expert here on where Ducks and Lemon is really. Uh, while we may be a private, we may have in, uh, uh, influence with private landowners, we may bring projects forward. Even, we, even me and Taylor don't really have any, all, all, the, uh, all the details for this program. But I would suggest you contact Steve. Um, and like I said before, I think this is a program that has some potential to intersect and, and be intermixed with the Prairie Wetlands Project to get to, folk, to, 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 to deliver both the prairies and wetlands on the private uh, landscape in Texas. Um, and with that, I, I'll be free to take questions.